Deep Sea Danger by Judy Freed, illustrated by Nathan Hale. Question of the Week Why do explorers seek out other worlds? Characters Crew of the research vessel Neptune Marcus, electrician Lou, navigator Ronnie, radio operator Chris, cook Samantha, pilot in training Stan, deckhand Willie, deckhand Crew of the submersible explorer Dale, junior scientist the Professor, Senior Scientist, Isabel, Pilot. Scene 1. Time. The Not-So-Distant Future. Setting. The deck of the research vessel Neptune, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Explorer, a deep-sea submersible, is stage left. The Neptune's radio room is stage right. Its crew lounge, an open area next to the radio room, is center stage. At Rise, Marcus, Chris, Lou, and Samantha work on Explorer. They are preparing the submersible for launch. Ronnie sits at the radio controls. Dale, the professor, and Isabel watch the crew work. Samantha. Lights. Marcus. Check. Samantha. Oxygen? Marcus. Check. Samantha. Emergency oxygen supply? Marcus. Three days worth of oxygen are ready to go. Ronnie. Speaks into the radio. Testing. Testing. Lou, do you copy? Lou. From inside the submersible. I hear you loud and clear, Ronnie. The radio is fully functional. Chris. Here's lunch, dinner, and plenty of water. Samantha, what about the emergency food supply? Chris, there are three days' worth of meals under the seats. Samantha, then all systems are go. Isabel, the submersible is ready to launch. Isabel, to the research vessel crew. Thank you, Samantha. Great work, crew. Attach the cable and lower us into the water on my command. The Professor, to Dale. Dale, it's time to go. Isabel, to the Professor. Are you and your assistant ready, Professor? The Professor, of course we're ready. We spent three days using robots to map the floor of this particular deep-sea canyon. Now we're going to be the first humans to explore it. Isabel, then let's go for a dive. Isabel and the professor head toward the submersible. Dale stays stage right. Dale, nervously. Wait, wait, tell me again. What happens if there's a really bad storm and we have to stay underwater until the weather clears? Chris, don't worry. I gave you enough food and water to last three days. Samantha. I showed you how to use the controls, remember? If Isabel can't pilot the Explorer, just call us on the radio. We'll help you get back to the surface. Dale. And what if there's a problem with the electricity and the oxygen fails and we can't breathe? Marcus. Don't worry, Dale. I... The professor doesn't let Marcus finish his sentence. That's right, Dale. Stop worrying. I've explored many deep-sea canyons, and nothing has ever gone wrong. Isabel, would you like to take a picture before you go? The Professor, of course, a photo of the intrepid crew that's going to make our mission a success. To Marcus, you, what's your name? Marcus, Marcus, the Professor. You're the electrician, aren't you? Marcus, proudly. That's me. The professor. Marcus, stand right here. Marcus stands in front of the submersible. The professor. Isabel, you stand here. Dale, over here. Isabel. All right. 
Isabel and Dale stand in front of the submersible. The professor to Marcus. Here's my camera, Marcus. Careful, it's an expensive piece of equipment. Marcus, you want me to take the picture? The professor, wait until we're ready, then push the button on the top. Marcus, I know how to take a picture. The professor, I'll stand here in the middle. Don't take the picture yet. The professor stands in front of the submersible between Dale and Isabel. The professor. All right, we're ready. To Marcus. Now. Marcus snaps the picture. The professor. Did you get a good shot? Let me see. Dale. Thanks, Marcus. It looks great. Isabel. Professor, Dale, get on board. It's time to launch our mission. Dale, the professor, and Isabel climb into the submersible. Lou, Chris, Sam. Speak all at once and wave. Good luck. Happy hunting. Have a great mission. Isabel. In two hours, we'll be exploring a deep sea canyon. Scene 2. Time. Two hours later. Setting. Split scene. Dale, the professor, and Isabel sit inside Explorer. The submersible is now deep in the Pacific Ocean. Aboard Neptune, Ronnie sits at the radio controls. Everyone else stands in the crew lounge. Throughout this scene, focus shifts between the three areas of the stage. Actors freeze when their area is not active. If lights are available, lighting can highlight active areas of the stage. At rise, Isabel steers the submersible while Dale and the professor work. The professor. Look, Dale, there's coral growing on the canyon walls. Dale, this is amazing. The professor. I told you. This will be the adventure of your life. Isabel, we're about to touch down on the bottom. The professor, excellent. A gentle thud. The submersible rocks gently as it settles at the bottom of the canyon. The professor, I'll get the camera. Dale, you collect samples of the silt. Dale, what's that animal? The glowing blue one. The professor, just use the robotic arm and put it in the sample case. We may have found a new species. In the radio room, Ronnie speaks. Ronnie, to the research vessel's radio. Explorer, do you copy? Isabel, to the submersible's radio. We hear you loud and clear. Ronnie, how's the weather down there? Isabel. The current is strong, but the fishing is great. Ronnie. Call us if you need anything. Isabel. Will do. In Neptune's crew room, Lou and Samantha are charting the submersible's course, while Marcus and Chris relax. Samantha. You've been complaining ever since Explorer left. Let it go. Chris. What's wrong with Marcus? Marcus, imitating the professor. Careful, that's an expensive piece of equipment. Like I don't know how to take a picture. Lou, I think he has a bruised ego. Marcus, those scientists act like the pilot is the only one on the crew that matters. Like the rest of us don't even exist. Lou, that's it all right. Marcus, when was the last time a scientist took a picture of the navigator, or the cook, or the radio operator? It's always about the pilot. Chris, what do you expect? The pilot takes them deep into the sea. We stay up here. Marcus, doesn't that bother you? Samantha, it's just a picture. Get over it. Marcus, someday I wish they'd take my picture. Is that so much to ask? On the Explorer. Dale. What's that big thing? The Professor. Be more specific. Dale. That creature swimming toward us. The Professor. It looks like a giant squid.
Dale. It's enormous, the professor. Yes, giant squid can grow to a length of fifty-nine feet and weigh nearly a ton. Dale, it's wrapping its tentacles around us, the professor. And notice how the suction cups are lined with sharp saw-like rings. Dale, is it trying to eat us, the professor? I seriously doubt it. Pause. I've never seen a live giant squid before. Sound of a loud bam. The submersible rocks. The lights flicker off and on. Isabel to radio. Mayday! Mayday! We are under attack by a giant squid. Ronnie, explorer, what happened? Isabel, the squid slammed us into a canyon wall. The professor, get us out of here. Isabel, I can't. I've lost propulsion. That squid has its tentacles wrapped around our rear propellers. The entire research vessel crew rushes to the radio room. Samantha, can you use the side propeller? Isabel, affirmative. Samantha, to radio. Scrape up against the side of the canyon wall. Maybe that will make the squid let go. Isabel, I'll give it a try. Sound of another loud bam. The submersible rocks. Lights flicker again. Samantha, is it working? Isabel, negative. It's still hanging on. The professor, we're in its territory. Now it's released a cloud of black ink. Lou, to radio. Dale, use the robotic arm. Try to loosen the squid's grip on your propellers. Dale, I can't see the propellers. The ink is in the way. Chris, what about the eel gun? Lou, the what? Chris, the eel gun. Tell them, Marcus. Marcus, I've been working on a plan to turn the robotic arm into a stun gun for research about electric eels. Isabel, does it work? Marcus, it fires a powerful electric charge. Dale, do you see the red button under the robotic arm? Dale, yes. Marcus, touch the squid with the robotic arm, then push the red button. Dale, okay. Marcus, what happened? Dale, the squid felt it. Marcus, try it again. Dale, it's rewrapping its tentacles. The professor, it's releasing more ink. Marcus, this time hold the button down for as long as you can. Dale, this ought to do it. Sound of a loud thud. Submersible rocks. Lights flicker. The professor, it's swimming away. We're free. The research vessel crew whoops and cheers. Isabel. I still have no propulsion from our rear propellers, Marcus. The circuit breaker probably tripped. Check the number four circuit breaker, Dale. I'll check it. The professor. How do you know where to find the circuit breaker, Dale? Marcus showed us in safety training. Don't you remember? Dale opens a panel near the controls. Marcus, is number four off? Dale, yes, I'll reset it. Dale switches on the circuit breaker. Isabel, Neptune, I have rear propulsion. All systems are go. Lou, Explorer, I've plotted your course back home. Prepare to receive the coordinates. Isabel, thanks, Neptune. See you in a few hours. The professor. Here comes that squid again, Dale. I'll get the stun gun, Isabel. Brace yourself. Sound of another thud, the loudest one yet. The submersible rocks. The lights flicker again, Isabel. We've lost oxygen. Put on your emergency breathing apparatus, Dale. The professor and Isabel suddenly stop moving. Ronnie speaks into the radio, Explorer. Explorer, can you hear me, Marcus? 
What happened? Ronnie speaks to the research vessel crew. We've lost communication with Explorer. Samantha, will they be able to surface? Chris, will they be able to breathe? Ronnie, we'll have to wait and see. Scene three. Time. Two hours later. Setting. The deck of the Neptune. At stage left, Dale, the professor, and Isabel sit frozen. At rise, everyone on the Neptune is pacing or looking stage left. Marcus, how long has it been since we heard from Explorer? Ronnie, almost three hours. Samantha, I see something over there. Chris, it's Explorer. Lou, grab the cable. Let's pull them in. Chris, if I ever get my hands on that squid, I'm going to turn it into calamari. Lou, to Samantha, there go Stan and Willie. Diving in to hook the cable, Stan, grab the cable, Willie. Willie, there, I've got it. Marcus, swim clear. We'll lift Explorer onto the deck. Marcus, I'm opening the hatch. Chris, are they all right? Isabel, the professor, and Dale emerge from the Explorer. Isabel, well, that was an adventure. The professor. It was horrible, horrible. This is the last submersible trip for me. Isabel, I've heard that before, Professor. Dale, are you kidding? That was amazing. I can't wait to go on another deep sea mission. I wonder why that squid attacked us. Do you think it was attracted to the lights? Can we dive down tomorrow and find out? Isabel laughs. Tomorrow, Explorer isn't going anywhere. Tomorrow, Explorer is having a complete systems check.